What's happening, everyone? Hotspur News here. Welcome back to another video. It's been a while since we've done one of these, but welcome back to another weekly roundup. It's been about like a month or two, so it's been a very long time since we've done a video on this channel. But uh, four things we're discussing. A lot has happened over this last month or so. Um, today we're going to be discussing our new manager, which should be announced Wednesday. Um, our new director of football, uh, Paratici. Um, also, um, also the first match there at the Euros, how players performed. And the situation with Christian Eriksen with the Denmark Finn again. So we're going to start with, I don't know, what should we start with? There's a lot to talk about. But I mean, uh, with? Obviously, it's been announced. Obviously, we haven't posted in the last couple of days and a lot has happened with the Conte situation. But, but yeah. Uh, he said that he was the best sporting director in the world. Or yeah. Someone said. Um, yeah, in my in my opinion, um, I think we could be linked with quite a few Italians after this appointment mm, because yeah. I heard that I heard, he, cause I heard he was pretty decent at Juventus, mm. and and changes need to be made. So why not like take it? So why not, so the thing is that why not take a chance? You know, I mean, Sevic in <laughs> I've got no words to say for that guy. He's just he's just some proper long guy. He's, he, like, he just takes so long. Uh, so hopefully Paratic can sort that one out and um, and also because he works at Juventus we could be uh, linked with a few Italians this summer which could be interesting there's quite a few Italian ballers in the Serie A but yeah obviously Paratic that was announced what like two days ago mm. I'm just trying to find something where it shows all of what he's done um, yeah. all the Paratici. transfers he's made I know he got Pogba on a free transfer he got uh, Pirlo on a free transfer which is like a Juventus legend um mm. Who else? I, mean, I was like a 90-year-old Pirlo on a free transfer. I can't lie. That's just, that's just how good that one was. Like, okay. uh, we have Paratici's best signings. So we have... Right, you read them out. Or send them to me. So first, all, so first of all, we've got Paul Pogba, who is involved with the free transfer of the nine, of the 19-year-old Pogba in 2012. So he signed Pogba from United on a free transfer. Uh, Andrea Pirlo, like you said, on a free. Uh, Paolo Dybala from for twenty three million yeah, from a, in twenty fifteen. Uh, Carlos Tevez from um, Man City for eight million. Uh, Arturo Vidal nine million from Bayer Leverkusen in twenty eleven. Kingsley Coman for, on a free transfer from PSG. Yeah, that's, a really um, that's probably his best one. Uh, Wojciech Szczesny. Uh, signed for 10 million after two seasons online at Roma. Obviously, like, not as big as a steal as like Dybala, they're but still like, a good. But... They're not like hidden gems, all these transfers, but they. Mm. And Steve Hitchin. So. Mm. Yeah. And one uh, of the recent ones, uh, Chiesa uh, from. Uh, what was it? Martina, yeah. The signing of Chiesa took its time being one of the party's biggest recent successes. The deal to bring him to Turin was financially clever, a two-year loan which costed only 1.8 million for the first season and will cost 7.2 mil for the second, so that's what, 9 mil yeah. for two seasons. And a 36 million permanent deal of, of the transfer he's made. So yeah, exciting times ahead, but moving swiftly on to the manager. Um, it's looking likely it's going to be Paris Seca, is that his name? I don't know how to say it, but we, we can start with content first. Um, I know you're yeah. gonna. I haven't really spoke about it with you yet because we haven't obviously spoke since the end of season once because we both took a break. But at first, but then I know it's gonna shock a lot of people when he didn't accept us. Now I know people are gonna jump onto me and say, "Oh how?" But if you look at Angelotti, he left to go to Real Madrid after one year. They said he wanted to build a project under him. The thing is, Conte's only stayed at the club for two seasons. He's going to need to get back to this rebuild. Mm. Manager, who's had two seasons where he's done teams, We our rebuild's going to take three or four to get back to where we are. That's how far we are behind. Conte, I've had the same thing happen with Conte. He might get like Barcelona coming for him and then he leaves. And they'll be in a more shit position than we are now. So mm. I, I think Conte is for Levy. They're more of a long term. 
Mm. Well, but now it's looking like it's going to be a Paolo Fonseca, the former Roma manager. Basically, Spurs and Roma have switched managers uh, to to basically put it into context. They've basically just done a swap deal in transfer uh, in transfer and managers. That's basically what it is. Obviously, Mourinho going the other way to Roma, and um, and people. To be honest, I'm kind of mixed. I'm happy because of his style, which could maybe suit our team more. But I'm also unhappy considering the fact we were, we were literally linked with Conte last week, who is probably our best fit. But, uh, but yeah, but anyway, so I'm just going to... Conte is that terrible. I thought there were better managers we could have got than Conte. I think Pochettino or Lopetegui. I think yeah, I if you compare, Yeah, if, if you compare Conte to, to him, yeah. there's a big difference. But anyways... Um, um, obviously, Fonseca, 48 years old, Portuguese manager, um, did have a playing career, but hung on his boots in 2005. And his first managerial job in Europe was Shakhtar Donetsk in 2016, uh, um, which obviously led him to three successive Ukrainian titles, which isn't the toughest thing to do, but yeah, still a to do this. Um, Three successive Ukrainian Cups and a Ukrainian Super Cup. And then, and then obviously... After three years at Roma in 2019, he signed. Sorry, um, after three years at Shakhtar, he signed for Roma in 2019, which he'd spent two years. In his first season, he finished fifth, but in his second season, due to um, due to injuries and um, yeah, many injuries, um, to be honest, seventh isn't that bad. Like I know it's a Serie A and it's more like a farmers league compared to the Premier League. But yeah, could, I agree. I don't think like he really is a bad manager. I think people are looking at him saying, "Oh, we finished seventh in Serie A. He underperformed." But if you look mm. at it, they had a lot of injuries. I remember the Man United game, they're like three players like taken off. Yeah. Like, there's, a, they, there's a lot of injuries. And then they just collapsed. Like mm. they're the goalkeeper, like he's not a bad manager, let's be real. Getting fifth in your first season with Roma and their fully fit team, with how Roma are, mm. isn't that bad. Mm. And I think you gotta look at it like um before his injuries, I think they were top three in the league and they had the most XG created goals. In all, mm. um, so I know people are going to jump on my. People are looking at it in a bad way because we could have got yes, we could have got better coaches, but we just have to back this manager. Like I'm seeing people doubting him already and saying this, we have to back the manager, we have to trust in the sporting director because Levy hasn't picked this guy. Like Levy, mm. him, but then. Um, Patricia came in. He said he admires him and he wanted to sign him. So we, this isn't Levy's decision. <laughs> Patricia. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Paratici, Patricia. That's a girl's name, bro. To <laughs> back the manager, I'm seeing people jump onto his back straight away. Just give him time with the squad. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred percent, I agree. I think people have been. Um, a bit to um, uh, overreaction, <coughs> Charles, because um, because obviously like Roma finished because <laughs> obviously Roma finished seventh, and the people aren't realizing that he was successful with Shakhtar Donetsk for three uh, for three consecutive years, and also Roma had a lot of injuries during that um, during last season, the twenty twenty one season, and he still got to Europa League semi final, beating who did they beat Ajax they beat to get to the Ajax. Um... <laughs> Can't think of the other team. Man's on crack. <laughs> See, on, like, um, anyway. but, like, um, yeah, but either, yeah, but either way, Roma be a very good Ajax team to get to the semi final, regardless. So, obviously, so obviously, like I'll back any manager that comes in, and I'm going to do so when, if that's when it's announced on Wednesday. Um, at this point, I just don't care who we get. The message always remains the same: Levy out as always. Um, but, anyways, moving on. To the Euros, match day one almost finished. Um, England one nil win against uh, Croatia. A very good result looking back here because Croatia are a very underrated I just team. Realised as well, only one of our players hasn't played, so it's a bit of a sticky one. But yeah, um, yeah, I think um, I think France have still got to play. The recent Sissoko, obviously in the French team, it's still baffled. Like. It still baffles me how Zosoko is in there and Ndombele I isn't. Like, I was saying, like, you know the France managers, like Deschamps, like, he knows about them, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he doesn't watch them. So he thinks, what one am I going to pick? Did he hear Deschamps? Yeah. Messed up there, but... Yeah, but anyways, um, yeah, but anyways looking at the first match week, who's looking the favourites? Like, looking at the teams that's played so far, 
Because for me, I'm I'm saying Italy. Oh, they, I know it's Turkey. I know it's Turkey. I respect that. I know it's Turkey. But looking at the way they played and their team, Donnarumma in goal. They've got an excellent goalkeeper. Mm. Uh, Insigne, Immobile. I could go on. Like there's. I mean, like obviously, I didn't say it to you guys, and because we didn't. I was going to do the Euro predictions, but obviously it was too late when I came up with the idea. But I said before, what Turkey are a bad team. Turkey are very good. Like you're saying it's just Turkey. Turkey have got really good players. They've got Demiral, who we've been linked to, Soyuncu, Yilmaz. I put Yil- in yeah, my man, fantasy well. team. Chai and Roglu, yeah. Yeah. Now, they've got good players. Yeah. And Italy just wiped the floor with them, like, easily. Um, mm. I think I'm going to stick by. I don't think I'm going to change my opinion. Or uh, Italy um, and Portugal. France's team. If you look at that under-21 team, mm. like, it was, it was just mental. Like, they put our on the under-21s at Upa Meccano. Like that is just <laughs> mental. Like, <laughs> hey, France have a lot of squad depth. Like they have a shit ton of squad depth. And to be honest, like, and to us, like overall, I'm going France as the favourites. But looking at the fixtures, oh sorry, um, but looking at the games so far, Italy have been by, by far the best team. Like I know they, um, I know they played Turkey, who were very poor, um, in the second half, especially. Like it, to be honest, like I was watching that game. I thought first half Turkey were doing them very well, but as soon as but, but as soon as Italy broke the deadlock, you can see like but you can see like the difference um, compared to the first half. But I yeah, obviously, well, England- I thought we played quite well yesterday. When I mean us, I mean England. I thought people were saying oh, we played decent, we weren't that good. Like we could have easily scored two or three yesterday. I think that's mm-hmm. the first time I've actually seen us play like really well in ages. Mm-hmm. I think as well with England, mm-hmm. we have the right balance as well. Like we've mm-hmm. got. We've got a loads of scores if we wanted to. I think people say I'm going to overreact, but I think we are up there as one of the favourites with Portugal and Italy. Um, mm. Well, well, uh, to us, the only worrying thing is that even if we win the group, we've got to place the runners up of a group containing France, Germany, Portugal, or Hungary. But but they're but, but never. To be the best, you've got to beat the top teams, didn't you? I mean, I mean, to us, like looking at that group, I'm back in France. You'd say France and Portugal, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. To be honest, I would say France and Portugal. Like, well, to us, people have been calling Portugal overrated, but I don't think so. They've got a very good team. The They've got a very is, good. Goal. I think you've got two teams. I don't think Germany are overrated. I think everyone knows their shit. Um, I think people were talking about Portugal. Yeah, Germany have been horrible since the 2018 World Cup. Yeah, that that was the last competition. Yeah, that was literally the last competition. Since then, that's what I meant. So, I think Portugal. Right. Yeah, they've been okay, but they haven't. I think people are gassing them up too much. I think they are one of the favourites, in my opinion. But I don't think they will win it. Um, I think I think they'll come second because Germany is just dead. Um, so. I think people have a right. I think people have a right to hype up Portugal though, because look at their team. Like, first of all, yeah, you've got they've got very good. A, well, in my opinion, Rui Patricio, one of the most underrated keepers I know. Like, mm. excellent goalkeeper, um, and also, and also their attack. Yeah, but yeah, well, Portugal got Ronaldo. Uh, João Felix. Um, who else? I saw something saying Bruno might not even start as well. It's mental. Bruno Fernandes, mm. Bernardo Sanchez. They've got like because I'm just saying like that. Portugal... Yeah, exactly. Like Portugal. <laughs> exactly. Like Portugal got like, a lot of squad depth. I can't lie, but yeah. But anyways, back to England. I mean, Scotland next. They lost two 0 <laughs> to the Czech Republic. And and to be honest, like. And in my opinion, Czech Republic are a half decent team, but not that bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought both of these teams could be dark horses in this competition. One yeah. of the teams, whoever wins today, I think will come second in their group. I, I, and third, I think I'm not too convinced about Croatia this year. Um, hmm. I know they were, but since then they got battered six 0 by Spain. They've lost to Cyprus. Like, how can you lose to fucking Cyprus? Like. Teams they've lost to and like the dip in form they've had, I think Croatia will actually finish bottom. 
And I know it's going to be controversial um, hmm. with the quality of Scotland and Czech Republic. Yeah. Well, I'm a good today, but I thought Czech Republic defensively were very good. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm saying. And, uh, that's what, what, what a goal. Right, what a fucking hey, Patrick Chick. Un- I was brilliant in, goal. I was in yeah. school when it happened and I fell off my seat. Because we had it on like, we had IT and we were watching it and I fell off my seat when it went in. It was just such what, a... You fell off your seat? You were like, yeah! <laughs> you just I, like, like, I, just I fell off my seat. It was mad. But anyway, yeah. We just, yeah, the teachers in the classroom were just, <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it was crazy. But um, I'd also like to say, I know we haven't touched on it yet, it's quite a sad thing, moving on. But... Um, obviously, we can't go away. Say Tottenham legend, Christian Eriksen. Um, oh, yeah. Tottenham legend. Yeah, I think in the Finland like game, our honest, obviously, um, if you don't know, if you obviously watch football, you most likely will know. He had a cardiac arrest, which is like the advanced word for a heart attack in a, the middle of a game um, for Denmark. And uh, yeah, it was, I think he's, Heart went for five minutes. He actually died nearly. Yeah, yeah. For five Apparently, minutes. his heart stopped for like a good 10 15 minutes. Mm. And and obviously, massive shout out. I mean, people are going to say shouts like the paramedics and the CPR and all this shit, but mm. massive shout out to Denmark captain. What's his name? Simon Kajar or something? Yeah. Simon Kajar, you absolute hero. I, I mean, mm. <laughs> I'd also um, like I mean, to say something. I would well. I just saw like, something called my feed and it's kind of disgusted me. So Peter Schmeichel has just come out and said that no, uh, no, UEFA no, threatened Denmark with a 3-0 forfeit if they didn't compete the game. Nah, that's BS. That BS. Is, wow. They need... Wow. Because wow. I was thinking, why are they playing that game so early? I'm just saying, yeah. I'm saying like, the media as a whole like, handled this situation like really poorly. First of all, the whole 3 0 threaten thing. But also, did you see? Okay, fair enough. I know, okay, fair enough. Like, I know it's not BBC's fault because, um, yeah, because I think they're. It was UEFA. Yeah, yeah, because I'm pretty certain their cameras are connected to the UEFA or Denmark TV or something. But the cameras were literally filming his wife, first of all, and his wife on the. To block it off. It's a joke. And the players, had, and the players had to like, make a circle around him. He had to like, oh, it's like, oh, okay. And then I saw it, bro, I was shook for 15 minutes. Like, I was seeing pixels. I, like, was, I was I confused because I, I, I just saw him drop to the ground. I was like, what? I was so confused. It just randomly just Oh, you watching it live? Huh? Are you watching it live? Yeah. Yeah, because um, hey, I was playing golf, yeah, um, and my dad was, um, and my dad said, Simon just texted me, which was my dad's mate, and he said, Simon texted me, and he said, Ericsson has just collapsed on the floor. And then we go to the next hole. I look at my phone. I look at my phone. My mate sent me the footage. I had to stop the round because I was that shook. I had to stop. Mm. I had to go in. I had to go home because, like, it just shows like how literally, like, just like that, it, it could all change. Yeah. But yeah, but as I said, massive shout out to um, Simon Kajar. You um, know, I mean, as well, it, it is. It's most likely going to be Ericsson's probably last game in football. Um, oh yeah, like there's no chance. I like mean, I just can't. I mean, he was him. 29. I mean, he's coming to mm. the twilight of his career. He probably had like two or three years left. Let's be real. Um, but he's mm. always a Tottenham legend. Um, I know he didn't leave the club that well, and obviously fans have a bit of a gender on him because of that. But I thought for the rest of his years, he was easily one of our best players of all time. I think. Oh yeah, he obviously. Especially he was my he was my favorite player he when was, he was at Spurs. Um, he was mine he, as well. I liked him more than Harry Kane. And that's probably saying something. Until, until that last season, he was probably our second best player for like five or four Yeah, years. to be honest. Yeah, like when he did play, he was one of our top players when he actually played on the pitch. We did, which Ericsson didn't really did that much. Yeah, because yeah, cause, um, uh, cause before Ericsson went to Inter, like, he didn't really feature that much the last, on the pitch. But when the he last did. Six yeah. month, well, not six months, like the last three or four months or so, he was a bit lackluster. I thought mm. he definitely improved. Yeah. Um, he, I mean, six months out of what five, like nearly six, seven years. I think. Yeah. Obviously, doesn't change anything, and I thought. Obviously, 
he's one of our path, one of probably our best teams, 16-17. Um, yeah. It's a shame he just never won a trophy at Tottenham as well. Um, but he won mm. a trophy every other club he's been at. So, yeah, um, it is quite emotional. But, um, yeah. What was that noise? <laughs> what is going on it's in the row? It's been outside of maybe in the other garden. Why is he... For a brick on the Huh? Throw a brick on his head. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you some gay son of a concussion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but anyways, it's people, um, the next people get well soon to um, Christian Eriksen. Shout out to, uh, shout out to the paramedics and Simon Kajar, Denmark captain. But that caps off our weekly roundup. So it's been a while since we've done one of these, but thank you guys for watching. Uh, also, I haven't said this yet, but thank you for 2,000 followers on Instagram and 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 to be honest, we're nearly at two point one already and it's been like a week or two since we hit two K itself. So yeah, thank you for that. Um obviously fresh new content. Um uh what's it on our Instagram we're only gonna be posting tier one, tier two sources because according to um <laughs> RG and, um, and, because uh, according- and David Mo <laughs> with his uh, child in his uh motorcycle anyway <laughs> <laughs> because according to our genius <laughs> Well, I didn't know how to do it. I've never done it before. Like, who? Yeah. Who's our genius? Me. Who is our genius? No, not you. Who? Who's David the genius? Morato, his name is David no, 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 no. Who is the genius? No, Guzman's coming. Who? Who? Who am I talking about here? The, the Anakin Skywalker fanboy, Walking Dead, oh. and he's apparently nineteen. Oh, I love sports and games. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, but anyways, um, a, coin... than a, fat, a fat person's fucking sandwich, anyway. yeah, great one, <laughs> but great one, um, yeah, but um, yeah, but anyways, um, thank you guys for watching. We're only gonna be posting um, tier one, tier two, potentially tier three news, um, but none of this and, and Sunday, and star bullshit. but none of this um, Sunday star bullshit, only Fabrizio. Only Alistair Gold, only David Ornstein, only Alex Crook and all them lot. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next time.